Good morning, folks. We've got stories from the ground out to deep space today. You're going to notice a bright active region pop up on the sun just north of the equator on the left. It's one of two solar notes this morning, so we'll start at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day on our star with small patchy coronal holes continuing to pepper the disk as that brighter point emerges from the photosphere. It is indeed another little sunspot group, not flaring, but it is another step on the long march back to sunspot maximum. The solar wind continues calming, geomagnetic conditions are calm as well. But for only the third time since 2011, we are seeing the same jumpy pattern on an otherwise stable stream on the longer time scales. Folks, this only happens with small, tight coronal hole streams, where their vastly different plasma pressure and temperature, not to mention motion relative to the ambient solar wind field, creates the Kelvin-Helmholtz instability. From ocean waves to the rarer forms in the clouds, this is actually a common instability in fluid dynamics, and the peaks existing at the edge of the coronal hole stream in the solar wind plasma are what's causing that odd-looking telemetry in the solar wind. Let's go now to the snow, and while western Canada is a heck of a place to set snow records, it's nothing compared to the jet stream wave out ahead of Storm Gloria pounding the Mediterranean. The jet stream in magenta dips over Kazakhstan and into the Middle East, driving those dangerously cold marks to the parts of the world that don't exactly have heating infrastructure. It is meant to continue for at least four days, with freezing marks almost reaching the Indian Ocean. Let's jump out to Mars, where the conditions are somewhat different than the ice-covered ocean moon of Saturn we looked at yesterday. But just like Enceladus, they are suggesting that the habitability of Mars has been underestimated. While that moon may be habitable today out at Saturn, they say Mars was an even better candidate when it had salty oceans on its surface, the evidence of which may be all across the planet today. Stepping out one step further to a good intro article to the ESA's planned solar orbiter can be found. This is a complement to the Parker probe already up there and is set to begin delivering similar science with an eye slightly more focused on whole sun imaging and study. Interesting paper out about neutron star magnetic fields. They have long been trying to explain the chiral magnetic effect seen at these stars, especially since they don't exactly comport with what they say a neutron star actually is. But here, in the exact opposite of a shocker, they say that the development of a powerful magnetic field is how you explain the magnetic effects on that star. Not sure if they were looking at fairy dust or unicorn tails before, but something tells me they finally got the right answer here. Up next, folks, it appears the plasma cosmology studies are jumping up in complexity, even if a basic explanation of the paradigm shift they're fueling remains inconspicuous. Hunting spirals in space isn't as easy as you might think. Most aren't face-on and presenting the nice visible shape. You need to use proper motion, polarization, and numerous other methods to figure out exactly what you're seeing in deep space, and they're finding the spiral shape almost everywhere they look. Last but not least, Another in the plasma realm, but this time scaling up from galaxies to clusters of galaxies and the radio bridges of intracluster material connecting them. These are some of the least understood but potentially most telling large-scale structures that are smaller than the large-scale cosmic web itself. Many such bridges may actually be cosmic filaments of the larger web, but either way, it is plasma glowing in radio because they're caught in magnetic fields and taking slight accelerations. The fields connect the cosmos entirely. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. Remember, tomorrow from 11 to 1 at the Briargate Barnes & Noble in Colorado Springs, Kat and I will be doing her first book signing. Both her children's books will be there, and it might be a fun way to spend the middle of a Saturday. Of course, Kat will be doing the work, and I will be chasing our two little children around, trying not to cause too much trouble. But anyway, we've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. And of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.